Hey, what's up everybody? Um, I am uh, doing kind of a hastily made video this morning. I'm going flying. Breakfast of Champions. Frank's Red Hot. You know you're in Western New York when that's happening. Um, so it's going to be a busy day and Kim's going to come in and ruin the video. Yeah. Cool. Good morning everybody. Brian Chase here. I am joined by my lovely wife Kim. My handsome son Thomas. Say hi, Tom. Hi. And he is our aviation photographer. You can follow him. I'll put the little link here. So you can follow him on his Instagram page. Um, so it's going to be kind of an exciting day. There's a lot going on. We're, we're taking our airplane uh, down to Stewart, New York to KD Aviation for, uh, for paint. And I haven't totally confirmed this yet so maybe stay tuned and see if uh, it works out but I'm gonna also I'm gonna be the one flying today Kim's gonna be a passenger how does that make you feel uh, I feel like I'm off the hook but also <laughs> no I don't mind sitting in the back sometimes yeah. so pressure's off me anyway yep. excited about the paint really so I am gonna try to do my instrument proficiency check if I can get the uh, instructor Greg to agree to do it uh, we got to make sure that we hit all the requirements of that on the way down there, which adds a bit to a normal flight. So um, hopefully we can do both. And uh, yeah, stay tuned, sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. All right, so I'm gonna run this checklist here. This is the pre-flight checklist, and uh, the door is unlocked. COM1 antenna on the top is there. The uh, wing fuselage fairing, this guy right here, is intact, both above and below. COM2 antenna, that little guy right there, is uh, good and attached. A little dirty, we have to get that cleaned. It's okay, we're gonna paint. Um, where did I go? Baggage door is closed and secured. The uh, static button, where is that? Right there. It is clear. Uh, parachute cover, it's right up here. You can't ever see it on this plane because the paint was done so well. Um, and the tie down rope was never attached. The horizontal and vertical stabilizers do look very good. I'm gonna go around here nice and close and check that out. The elevator and tab. So that's the tab right there. It looks good. And this is always a funny thing here. No push does not mean not to push on that. It means don't push the airplane like physically from that point. And rudder looks good. I check all these attach points in here. Make sure that that cotter pin is there. Another one there. And I hope there's another one up there. That little free weight is in there, or the uh, counterweight, I should say. <clears throat> um, that was the attachment hinges, bolts, and cotter pins. Right side of the fuselage. Oh, I'm running, running too far ahead here. Everything looks good here. This looks good. These little covers are over those holes. I guess it's just to keep the, the water in there. That weight is there. That weight is there. Leading edge all looks good. All right, so back to the right side, static port. That is there. Um, wing to fuselage fairing is here. All good and attached. Uh, let's see. Where did I go? I'm getting cold, so I'm screwing up this list here. Um, right wing trailing edge flaps and rub strips. Flaps look good. Rub strips are there. Yep, those points all look good. These ailerons look good. 
and the gap seal is there. Hinges, actuator, arm bolts, cotter pins, all good to go. There's our light. I'll check that on the way out. Got a little bit of ice on there. Leading edge is in need of paint, but otherwise good to go. Everything looks good here. There's the fuel vent. Um, I skipped through the list here pretty quick. Okay, so let's see. Tire condition looks good and inflated. That's on there. The fairings on there. The air inlet is clear. Vortex generator is good. That fairings all set. Bing! Looks good. All the screws are on and intact. <clears throat> Looks a little rough. Glad we're getting that painted. Looks good. Go ahead and get the Tannis unplugged here. Let's see what else we have here. External power is secure, close and secure, vortex generator condition is good. Oil I already checked. Open it again here. Over six quarts. Cylinders are hot, man. That Tannis heater is amazing. That's good. Inlet's clear. Tire looks good. Kick that out of the way. All right, I'm gonna check the fuel and we'll get out of here. We wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about um, the paint scheme that we're working on for our Cirrus. Um, as, if you've watched our first couple videos, you saw um, the, our, our purchase process. Um, and you know that uh, this plane that we have desperately needs paint. Fixer upper. It is a fixer upper for sure. So, um, yeah, tell us a little bit more of your thoughts on the kind of where we stand and um, what we're up to. So a few months ago, we hired a company called Scheme Designers, uh, which is basically like uh, an architect uh, for a home. Um, they help you paint your airplane, um, whether it's something that they create for you without your input or something that you guys kind of go back and forth on creating together. Um, so we, knowing we needed to paint, we hired them and I wanted to do something bird, wing, feather-like, um, kind of do a nod to uh, that. And um, I had to convince you a little bit of of that idea. Um, Not really. I mean, I guess to a certain extent. Like, if I had my way, we would have painted this thing in like all over olive drab, um, put the P forty Warhawk teeth on the front of it, and put D Day Invasion which stripes I like that down. Too, it it would have been really cool. But the thing that, that like my programming, I buy and sell airplanes for a living. So like my programming is entirely about um resale value and i wanted to make sure that we knowing that we're eventually going to sell this airplane someday um that it wasn't like it's something somebody would look at it and go oh god that's a that's a tough paint scheme or whatever so yeah we kind of needed to do something that balanced what we wanted what i wanted um with something that would also maybe appeal to more than just us and um, after maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 different uh, variations on this theme, um, Tyler, who we're working with, he, uh, he started messing around with cowling in this feather, very subtle, classy way. And um, I think we finally come up with the design. 
and uh, can't wait to show it to you guys. We're gonna be talking to Tyler um, later on this week and hopefully we can show you guys some of that video and then getting it up to paint. Um, but what's really great about Scheme Designers is that uh, because we have a composite airplane and Cirrus only allows you maybe to have like 20 different colors to choose from, um, they've been really helpful guiding us uh, what we can use, where it can go in the airplane, kind of following all the rules. So it's been super helpful. Um, we couldn't, we could not have done it without them. I, yeah. I, originally, I, there's this cheap vein in me that, that wanted to just come up with my own scheme and send it to the paint shop and be like, do this. But because of a lot of reasons, I would even suggest that you, you know, hire either scheme designers or, or a, somebody like that to do your design if that's what you're going to do. Um, but in our case, we really needed to know like yeah. what the the Cirrus would allow. They're very specific on not only the colors that are approved, but the amounts that you can use them on certain areas like wings and um, the fuselage. You, can, you only have eight inches or something. So it's very, very specific. They streamlined that whole process for it. So we're... And they put together basically like when we're done, after our meeting with Tyler, um, it's like a blueprint really that they sent to the painter you know, uh, yeah, like which you said, tells him, you know, percentages yeah. and all of the technical stuff that is beyond what we know. Um, and, you know, so it'll kind of be yeah. really easy for the painter. Yeah. So uh, we're going to show you the the, uh, the video of us working with them on this. And we really want to know your, your thoughts. So uh, please uh, comment and let us know what you think of it. We're, we're proud of it, but I'm, I'm always open. I love seeing the comments. I love, I read everything. Um, Kim does not, I insulate her from it. So you don't have to worry about hurting her feelings. If you're mean, I just won't show it to her. So anyway, let us know your thoughts down in the comments and uh, appreciate you watching. Did you notice here how all you really hear is engine noise? Me too! Turns out that the GoPro that you're watching this from uh, and the headsets are plugged into, like the little device that switches it from the exterior mic to the input, didn't work. And so we have about an hour flight <laughs> from here to uh, Newburgh, New York. Uh, all video looks great, but no audio. So instead, I'm going to cut in some other video of the other video where we talk to Tyler with Scheme Designers about our paint job and a couple other interesting things. So it's going to be what they call in the TV business filler. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll check back in with a flight and um, skip back to some more video and we'll make it interesting. Stay tuned. It's connecting the audio. Hi, there we go. Hey, there, there we go. you are. How are you? Good, Tyler. How about you? I'm doing pretty well. Um, here, right. sorry about that. Yeah, I was just. I felt like for the best audio would be with the uh, the AirPod. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, good idea. Audio, man, audio is so challenging. I've struggled with that so much. Cool. We're we're excited to see the uh, the final the final scheme here. Yes. Um. Here, give me a quick second as I get all this stuff up. All right, cool. So as you can see, we have the overall silver design. It's gonna be different shades of silver. So when the light hits it, you'll see the contrast that kind of pops. It's almost gonna act like a watermark. Yep. And then to kind of break up the watermark feel of it, we're gonna have the Titan Gray that kind of just 
adds a little bit of a pop to the overall like the subtlety of it yeah, and yeah. just give it a little bit of dimension yes over here we have the chase aviation emblem which will either be painted in the agate gray metallic since i brought it down to one color or it's going to be a vinyl whatever we decide on okay yeah. um we have it at 24 inches and yeah so that's that oh, that's beautiful um, thank you glad you like it this one came a long way yeah <laughs> um and then here's the plan view we got um so because of serious limitations on the wings uh we're not doing the the dark highlights underneath so right. that this is actually just going to be the watermark element of it yeah that's going to be cool yeah yep. but i think this is going to look awesome all right so that's that's dragonfly green on the wing like of of the the bird's wings itself and then the rest of the wing is the, the light so light yes yeah. st uh, sterling yeah, so medium yeah so we got the <laughs> sterling medium metallic and the dragonfly green as the accent and the cool thing about the dragonfly green is that if you see it in person when the light hits it there's like a subtle green hue to it it's silver but there's the the green yeah. hue to it which makes it unique yes yeah those feathers turned out so good i really like how that's what a what a pain I, what i want to do i want to show everybody the, what like the iterations were and to, to show like okay. where we came from a little bit, but we'll do that later in a, in a separate video. So this is awesome. So what do we need to do next? I mean, I, I know that there's like the, the, the finalizing guy that this has to go to, right? Yeah. So the, the next step, so now that we have the design approved, um, and when we were going through the edits, we did already prepare the files for the, like the vinyl masking or, yeah. However, the shop decides to do it. Okay. Um, I figured with something like this, it would be masked. Um, but the next step would be we produce the set of detailed specifications, which breaks everything down to the nearest eighth of an inch. And it's kind of just going to show the shop how to recreate this design. And we also have our files are in vector format, which in non designer terms, it pretty much will we'll sc be scaling it down to an eight and a half. By 11 document and okay. then the vinyl shop will be able to take it and blow it up to size yep. and it'll actually they'll be able to put it into a plotter and the plotter will cut the vinyl to create the mask oh really i didn't know that's how that was done that's cool yeah so it's um it's actually going to once they bring it all up to scale it should all you'll see the plotter will recognize the shapes that are currently on the the feathers or like on the design and it'll cut it out and that's how they kind of create the stencil using vinyl okay so ken will get you, you do you give him the vector file and and then his or your people do the i guess how does that work like in terms of getting him the actual vinyl to put on there so what we end up doing so our files are able to create like so we can send to him and if he outsources it that's one thing but we also do have a vinyl distributor that is able to create this and send it over that way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm I can't excited. Wait. <laughs> I can't wait to yeah, this see. Should be, this should be such a cool design, especially in person. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see the colors in person because I'm so excited about the dragonfly green. It looks, you know, like it's going to be a really cool color. So. All right, man. Thanks, Tyler. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. It was nice talking to you. Yeah, bye. Bye. All right, take care. Bye. Oh, look at that. Still flying along with uh, no audio. Nope. No audio. I am uh, super bitter about that. But anyway, um, I think I got that figured out, got that fixed. It's not going to happen again. I keep saying that. But um, anyway, it was a great flight. Um, I learned a lot. We did some lean of peak. Uh, actual training. I've, I've seen it done before and been in airplanes while it was being done. In fact, there's another video that we did where um, in the 210 that uh, Lou Nalbone did uh, Alina Peak, but you know, he was doing it. I wasn't. Greg actually showed me how to do it in, in my airplane with my um, CHTs and uh, EGTs, and it was really great. Um, man, that saves on fuel. And because you're using oxygen to cool the cylinder rather than fuel, you're saving a lot in fuel and you're really not sacrificing any airspeed. So um, that was great. We're going to go over that uh, in great detail in the future videos, so stay tuned for those. Um, we're going to 
kind of fast forward here to the landing and um, uh, show the touchdown at, at Newburgh and uh, the taxi over to the paint shop, KD Aviation. So the tower brought us in. Um, they made us do right traffic for runway 27 at uh, Stewart there. I'll, I'll pull up a, a plate and show you the airport diagram, but um, it, no big deal. Right traffic, when you're sitting in the left seat, is more challenging because you're, you're having, you really can't see the runway that well as you, as you start your turn. It's occluded, but uh, um, anyway, no big deal. So Newburgh, New York is a home of the um, Cessna Citation Service Center um, in the area. And they have a, I don't know what else is, oh, there's an Air National Guard unit um, that's stationed there as well. But they have a incredibly long runway. It is 11,817 feet, which is one of the longest ones I've probably ever landed on. Um, it's not like a super busy airport, but um, They've got that super long displaced threshold that you can see there. And that, that, that runway is runway that you use for takeoff, but you cannot use it to land on it. It's not, it doesn't have the same weight capacity as, as the rest of the runway. So, so you, you're over the runway for a long time before you actually touch down. Um, and then KD Aviation is, uh, it looks like probably 8,000 feet down from there. So I was very willing to just get over the runway and, Hold the nose off um, for a little while there. You can see I got a little oscillating, and now Greg's making fun of me for doing that. Um, I've the the little bit of flying that I've done in this plane. I'm sitting right seat and flying right seat so that I can be a better co-pilot for Kim. And so it was, <laughs> I think it's just a little muscle memory getting back there. But uh, yeah, oscillations are really bad. You don't want to develop that habit and. Um, um, so Greg was rightfully correcting me there and verbally slapping me on my hand. I'll do better next time. So their shop is um, all the way down at uh, Taxiway Lima. And it's weird because there's this there's some sort of a road, I guess, that the airport vehicles use, and since it intersects with, um, I guess, an active taxiway, um, you have to be escorted off the runway by a, I think it's like Port Authority vehicle. You can see it just barely right there. They were waiting for us, and they actually have to escort us the, I don't know, thousand yards maybe from from that area over to um, to KD Aviation, which are those hangars right there. Um, not sure if that's a state law or federal thing, how that works, but um, yeah, there's a road going right there, so you got to get special permission. In fairness, I should say it was all actually very seamless. It sounded like it was going to be kind of a nightmare, but but they were there. With Tower had him. I told him that where we were going, Tower had them waiting, and we just taxied right off like no big deal. So Kim kept talking about this really kind of aggressive shutdown flow that, that Greg taught her, and I wasn't on board for it, so I was asking him here, was the, as it shuts off, you'll hear him talking about it. Uh, you don't have to wait. 
She's a he mad one. Nah, you don't Whatever. have to. Yeah. Left to right when you start, right to left when you shut down. Okay. okay. Alright. She's been on. Good. Looks good. Yeah, it's not it's not terrible. I mean a lot of it is actually sort of like it's a shame to go ripping it off, but it's not working. Uh, the rings are a little rough it's not very loud. Yeah, I bought it, uh, October 15th, okay. But I mean, like, being a G2, I think they were all white. With black stripes, I think. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if... Going black with white. That's more than... Black, a black plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with white yeah. tips. Which is what all the newer ones. The same have. type of thing, right? Yep. Yeah, that's what I would do. Personally. You're saying keep it white? No. Or I go would black. Do it black. Black with white, yeah. Yeah. What we really want to do is this. Glow in the dark. So once again we're suffering from some kind of sucky audio here, but what we're discussing is doing uh photoluminescent aka glow in the dark prop tips um to to really add a new flair to <clears throat> to um, the props. It, I think it, it would be really cool. Um, Sherman Williams just came out with this this paint, and so nobody's done it yet, including these guys at, at KD Aviation. Um, Dave Coleman, uh, he's been selling airplanes for a long time, and he did his own renovation of an aircraft, and I'll flash the picture up um, on the screen here of what he did. And it, the, the effect is really cool. I don't know what color to do it in and how it would complement or sort of hurt our airplane, but... The, um, anyway, we're going to, we're going to look into it. It's, it's, we'd really like to try to do that. All right, let's go inside and we'll take a look and see what the, what the inside of the shop looks like. Uh, that's in, uh, stripping. Oh, wow. Now yours won't get stripped all the way down like that, obviously, being composite. Yeah. This goes down to bare aluminum. Yours goes down to a good surface. So this is our prep room over here is where we painted. Just painted this fuselage this morning. Wow. Can we go in here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just trying to. And <laughs> Marty's in here. <laughs> so this one just done this morning. Cool. Um, and I just took the time to, you know, since I've been done, I was kind of waiting for you guys. Um, the wings, it's done in two sections. Uh, the wings and the tail are done first. Primed and then painted. Okay. Then the uh, fuselage. I'm going to cover up the wings and then do the fuselage. I rip the wings open and put the tips on just to lay out the striping. Okay. So this one's going to look like uh, just so you see, you know, how we do it. And Okay, so this one is going to look, it's, it's off of a 182, mm -hmm. so this one's going to look like this. Okay. Okay. Brown? Mm -hmm. And gold and black. Yeah. And so I laid out the wing tip. Yeah. 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 Now it's a different shaped wing, it's a different airplane, so I kind of have to adapt. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now on Monday, the, the fuselage is too soft to do it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we had a great flight down there. Um, hope you got to see some some good footage. Uh, again, sorry about the audio. I'm going to get it fixed. All of this stuff is getting fixed. <laughs> We're basically there. I'm changing out the camera. I think that was ultimately my problem. So next video, part two, stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to, to stay up to date with um, all this progress. We've got some other... Um, changes modifications coming but not for a little while i'm not in a big hurry on any of that stuff and i'm um, enjoying doing this thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you again on the next one